Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, Coach, just uh, going over some the stuff here from, from the game. Um, you know, getting a big, you know, splash play from Fowler, is that something that could help the unit down the stretch, uh, you know, as he's working his way back? Well, I mean, you know, any, whether you want to call it splash play, you know, it's, they're more than just one play in a game, d -led. And obviously, you know, if you get a sack fumble, that could be a game-changing play. But we, we're just continuing to try to strive to play more consistent, d -led. Uh, you know, everybody sees the highlights. It's the it's every down play after play after play. We're trying to improve and, and to get consistency across the board. And uh, with that, you know, a lot of the uh, rookies played a lot. Richie might uh, most snaps for Darren, second most for um, for for Richie. And um, you know, Audie's been getting his snaps all along. How are those guys developing for the defensive unit? <clears throat> yeah, they're playing well. And again, you got to look into what. Uh, you know, with, with the entire rookie class, they're all contributing in, in some way. And some guys had to play earlier than others. It doesn't mean that, you know, the hot takes from September, well, Ade got thrown in there because of necessity and, and where we're at death-wise. Same with Jalen Mayfield. Um, and they've, they've done a nice job. But they're, the plan all along was to help these guys develop and bring them, bring them along the right way. So, Richie, obviously, when we signed Duran and Eric, we knew we wanted to, to bring them along the right way. And he's contributed on teams. And he's Role is starting to grow on, on defense. Uh, Darren Hall, same same thing. Uh, so please, those guys. I mean, they, they they're getting better every week. And the biggest you know uh, challenge now is to do it do it again against Tampa against a pretty uh, salty group over there on the Tampa's offense. And uh, uh, I got we got to move on to other people here. But uh, any news on Calvin Ridley as uh, you know he's played got five an updates. Do you like as soon as we get an update, we'll give you an update. I know you got to ask. But there's nothing update. Nothing update. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Michael? Yeah, a quick follow-up on, on Calvin, actually. Do you at this point anticipate he'll be back I, this season? Look, I'm not going to predict anything. Again, take it day by day. And if there's an update, we'll let you guys know. Um, I can save you the question. Okay. Uh, I know we talked a lot about the center rotation yesterday. After you watched film, what did you – was there anything you saw different from looking at those two guys on film versus what you had, what you thought in the moment? Uh, pretty pretty similar to what I thought at the moment. Um, I think, you know, both guys are a little bit different players, and uh, I thought the competition brought out the best in both of them. So we'll see what the plan of attack is this week is with the game plan in. But I thought uh, Matt Ennis, he, he played solid, and I thought Drew did a nice job coming in, going in there. I think both of them – Bright futures. I know they're play, both playing center, but we'll see where it goes. And I know this has been asked a few different times, a few different ways so far this year, but why have y'all been able to figure out how to use Cordero when other teams, it seems like, for so long in his career, didn't weren't able to get this type of production out of him? Uh, again, I wasn't in those other places. And the only comparison I have is the same question I used to get asked about Ryan Tannehill. Uh, different players, different parts of the career. You would think of a lot of things in life. The experience has led you to this point that probably benefited him. So uh, just to kind of set him circumstances here, he's done a really nice job. Uh, I don't think it's just one thing, uh, you know, where he fits, what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, a little bit of that, is, you know, moving him around. We, we, we had a pretty good grasp at it as he evolved in Chicago. Some of the coaches we had uh, that we have here that he had in Chicago. So it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, but, you know, we're happy. Happy he's here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Josh? You're muted, Josh. It's always somebody. It's like a, a, like a sitcom. Uh, First, no. We started it off hot. You know, Bassey was panicking about our speaker. I know. <laughs> D-Lab even got his unmuted. Violator. I think I did it last week on, on a Zoom call. So... The, the lack of downfield balls in the passing game yesterday, was that something they did coverage-wise, or does that go back to just getting open against man coverage? No, it's when they, that's what the game – it's the, the game's within the games, Josh. Same thing. that They didn't have a lot of deep balls either. I think what you're seeing, there was an interesting article written in the Wall Street Journal last week. It's like what's old is new again. A lot of, you're seeing a lot of too high. You're seeing a lot of soft zone. If they think you're going to be a big play pass, they got to make a decision. And then I think what you saw um, – Adapting was one of those drives in the third quarter. 
Uh, you know, the, the, the nice thing about yesterday is you can keep them off balance and it doesn't have, just have to be run, play pass, you know, screens and, and keepers, and we, we can drop back and throw. And you're going to have to take what they give you and stay efficient. And it's kind of becoming the, the, the key, Josh. But when you see those corners play so far off, whether it's in single high or they play in you know, different variations of two quarters, I, they're forcing you to, to complete the ball underneath and see if you'll go the, the long, hard way. Um, certainly, I think that's a, you see that as a trend in the NFL. And so if that's what their game plan is, we've got to be able to adapt. And I thought we did a decent job of that yesterday. Do you think what y'all put on tape run game-wise yesterday changes the equation in terms of preparing for you offensively? Uh, it's probably a better uh, question for maybe Todd Bowles. But, um, you know, we just got to keep getting better as an offense. And there are going to be different challenges every week. You know, obviously this will be a completely different front, different scheme. We'll play Sunday here in Atlanta. Uh, so, you know, we certainly just need to be, stay balanced, try to keep people off balance so you don't become too one-dimensional. Thanks, Tori? Tori? Yeah, I wanted to go back really quickly to Matt Hennessy and Drew Dahlman. And I was just curious, kind of from your perspective, do you think that it would be fair to say that you wouldn't have been able to do what you did at the center, like with the center position in the rotation without Matt Ryan under center? Because I just feel like that's probably something that only someone with his level of experience can handle. I, I was just kind of curious what you thought of that. Yeah, Matt Ryan's a big part of that. And when we had those discussions, I, I include Matt on that because it does affect him, Tori. That's a good question because it depends on the guy, you know, you're operating with. They, they may not be able to handle that, but that, that says a lot about Matt Ryan. Like I said, anything we think that can help this football team, we'll try. I don't think, you know, I don't care if it's been done before or not, we'll try it. Uh, if we think it can help help this team. So certainly something we've talked about as a staff, uh, you know, talk, sat with uh, Matt Hennessy and Drew Dahlman both. Talked to him about the plan, but they handled it well. And ultimately, you know, Matt Ryan had to be involved in that as well because it does affect them. And then kind of just switching gears to, to the run game as well. I know we were talking to CP last night, and he said from last Wednesday to Sunday that there was a distinct emphasis uh, that you put on this offensive unit. It, it almost kind of sounded like there was a challenge there to, to be better in the run and to put more um, solid play in that regard on tape. And so I was just kind of curious, like what was your challenge to them? What was those conversations like throughout the week? Yeah, I'll keep those private. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Go to George Henry, write me out. Yeah, piggybacking on that art, what what, what gave you the confidence to see that, um, that, that you're, because your running game came in, I know you said you wanted to kill the narrative, but you came in ranked 31st in the league in rushing. So what gave you the confidence that you could you could do this? Just from experience, and like I said, you can. It's a long season; things change so much week to week, and there's you know progress that we think are close, and you just keep chipping away at it. And there's some things we tweaked, um, but it, it's just experience. I mean, if you again, there's a lot of variables that happen. You're in year one, and then you know every every game is going to tell a different story. Yeah, you, you're going to look at it cumulatively, but if you can't improve in this business. Okay, if you come out and you start three and zero, and you have you know 400 yards a game, and then all of a sudden you could fall off a cliff, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the whole key to this thing is to be able to improve your football team, you know, week by week, month by one, month. And you know, obviously, there's obstacles along the way, and if you and if you if you buy into those and you act like it's broken and you, there's no way to fix it, then shame on you. That's kind of how I think, George. So uh, we've been making progress. It maybe hadn't showed up yet, you know, in the stats. Uh, but felt like we were close. Thank you. Can I answer that for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Michael? Yeah, Arthur, I want to ask a little bit more about Kyle Pitts, too. What have you noticed that teams are doing to, I don't know, maybe take him away a little bit? Or are teams doing things to take him away? Or is this a function of being a rookie like i guess where where do you see some of the disconnect with his production lately see a ton of disconnect michael I mean, disconnect maybe wasn't the right word on that yeah but where where do you think that some of the long season long career michael you know if, if uh you know there's a lot of plays where if you're the primary uh, you can try to force a ball into them 
the coverage dictates it goes on it opens things up for other guys you know russell had a productive day yesterday um you know kyle's a rookie week to week there's a lot of attention on him great you know and he'll he'll make his plays I said we can live to the week to week narratives i know they already wanted to get his bus ready uh after my miami or new orleans whatever week it was and i'm sure somebody was ready to uh get his hall of fame hall of fame speech ready it's a long career long season we got six big games left for us. Uh, very, very pleased with Kyle. I wouldn't get overly concerned. Uh, I think at the end of the day, you probably ask Kyle whether you catch two balls or ten balls. The objective is to win and, and to play better. And I think that's what uh, that's why he's got the right mindset. Are, are there any concerns with him dropping passes? It seems like there's been a couple over the last month that have been fairly open that he's dropped, including one last week or yesterday. Which one did he drop yesterday? There was one. I think it was. I think it was a third quarter. He was pretty open and just. It, it it wasn't clear if maybe the ball was tipped a little bit at the line, but it looked like it hit him in the hands. Okay, we'll mark him down for a drop. I'll tell. Um, I'll tell Peely to make sure he gives him a drop on that. Is there is there any concern at this point with with some no, of that? Like, there's no concern, buddy. Like it's like when you ask, like it's. Kyle's a good player. He's going to be just fine. You can be concerned. We're not concerned. He's going to, he's going to continue to work. He's at the right mindset. He's had a, he's had a pretty productive year. There's a lot of football left to be played. Um, so, you know, I guess if you're, you know, somebody had him on his fantasy team yesterday, I'm sure they're upset about the, the stats. All we're caring about is winning here and can we get better? So we don't look at the concern. Kyle's a good player. He's got great hands. So if you're concerned, I'll, I'll go back and, and uh, talk to Peel about, about the drop you gave him. All right. Anybody else? d All right, d what you got? Oh, you muted. Oh, you follow Josh up here. Look, I'm in an episode. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Yeah, I, I usually do that. So, okay. Um you know what, Josh? It's kind of following up Josh's question. What Matt? What is Matt seeing that he's having to hold the ball and then you know run, uh, ran for a couple there? Um, in the do we got change the routes up or they just jumping routes or stacking them or I don't know. What's he seeing there that uh, he's had holding the ball a little bit there? You think he's holding the ball? Yeah, yeah. He ran. He, he pulled it down and ran it four times there. I don't think those were design runs. Put a quarterback drawing. You don't even realize that, dude. Like, yeah, some maybe I'm just soft coverage, Some of the soft coverage is there uh-huh. uh, early on the, on the play pass, and so you either check it down to the flat. Okay. The, the, the rush lands were pretty pretty open, and he took off and, and got us a positive play. The other one was a, uh, a protection uh, issue, and that he made a hell of a play. The one he extended, he talked about to Mike Davis. Mm. Um, but. No, Matt's, Matt's doing a pretty good job. Okay. But you never know. I'll put in the quarterback power with him. All right. Uh, 18 sweet. Yeah. Um, the, um, what was your film review of the blocking on the 12-yard touchdown run? Pretty damn good. Okay, yeah. That's what I thought, too. And uh, just looking ahead, we got to try to do something on Tampa tomorrow. Um what are some of the dynamics? I mean, it was week two, so it's two different teams now. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of uh, football's been played since then. Uh, you know, how do you all get ready for the uh, world champs? What are some? Well, of the- we get ready for every week. There's a different set of challenges. Um, it's a talented football team. They've won a lot of games the last two years. They got some good veteran players, including you know, arguably the best quarterback to play. So we got to be ready to go and. Uh, Guys be, should be excited. It's a, it's a big divisional game for us on Sunday here. So looking forward to the challenge. Good opportunity for us. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? All right. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Arthur. Thanks, Beth. Thank you.